Hello, thanks for tuning in to Taking It Down, the TV and streaming podcast from the Alabama Take, where we prompt conversations for thoughtful, busy TV devotees, all from us, your irreverent outsiders. I'm Blaine Duncan. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Alabama Take. I always could not help dissecting why I like what I like and why I dislike what I dislike when it comes to TV, movies, and more. I have an English degree and a side hustle as an English teacher, so I'll try my best to offer insight that you can use for conversation with others or even with us or even just to think about. Luckily, my ideas aren't the only set of viewpoints on this podcast each week, as with me are the other hosts, Adam Morrow's an erudite traveling and studio musician with a penchant for fine literature. Donovan Reinwald is a media specialist with encyclopedic knowledge on film, television, and more. And Natalie Morrow, she's the first person to ask about fantasy, sci-fi, comics, trashy reality TV, and she's a huge Beyonce fan. From us, you'll get the obvious, but you'll get the obscure. We are here for the TV and streaming obsessed here, just too busy for anything more than the show or movie itself. We'll give the outside of Hollywood analysis. And like a lot of the Alabama Tate Productions, it'll come with zero Southern stereotypes. We we don't we don't care, do we? I care a little bit. Are we here? Is everyone here? We're here. What are we What are we not caring about? This procedure. <laughs> this this whole podcast. Well, uh, <laughs> it's summer. You're really underselling this whole thing. I don't care. <laughs> I've decided to I've decided to record this as if uh, as if no one listens. Oh, so can we swear now? So can we just go? Like, do we have to yeah. be here? <laughs> no, no now one has to be here. working blue, finally. Finally. <laughs> finally. That is my favorite, probably my favorite exchange I've ever had with my mother when I mentioned doing this. And she's like, oh, I should listen. I said, ah, sometimes we work blue. And she said, what's that? <laughs> Did you explain What is it? that? Explain it to us, Donovan. <laughs> so explain it to us like you explained it to your mom. I said it means we swear. And, and her follow-up was, "Oh, Donovan, <laughs> just okay." I'm thrown out of that by now. <laughs> uh, welcome, 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 YouTube people. Uh, it, we, it's summer, so what we need to do is we need to award a dilly bar to someone, which means you're the official taking it down uh, listener of the week, and we're going to award it to. To Joel, whose name I just did not write down. <laughs> Donovan, why don't you award the listener of the week this week? Uh, this it goes out to our uh, good friend and not a Marvel enthusiast, Joel Atkinson. Atkinson, that was it. Joel Atkinson, not Joel Schumacher, not to be confused. Can we wrap up this whole Dilly Bar thing by <laughs> mailing as the like the <laughs> ultimate gift? Not it still a gets dilly me bar. this mail. <laughs> it's been a year. <laughs> so, that bit doesn't get old. <laughs> so mailing not not a Dilly Bar, but the <laughs> melting uh, ice pop from normal people. Oh right! <laughs> I would like to I would like to mail that off to somebody, please. They just tossed it in the floor and then went to town on each other. I would like, like to mail the part of my brain that can't stop thinking about that years later to someone else. I like, biopsy it out and I stop worrying about it because I'm it's it's eating me up. I, I find that scene to be more mysterious than the entirety of Twin Peaks. Like David Lynch <laughs> could never. <laughs> he could well, he he would never. <laughs> That's more disturbing than anything he's cooked up, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there are more answers in a David Lynch series than, than with that goddamn popsicle. It lives rent-free in Adam's head. I love the idea that oh, it just I, sits in you. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get us going. Oh, by the way, so congratulations, Joel Atkinson. Special listener of the week, special deal because we're doing this only on YouTube. Listener of the week for the summer, every week in the summer, you have to you have to peek into the YouTube to see who wins does, the Dilly does Bar. Does Joel watch the YouTube? 
I don't know. We'll find we'll, out. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> see, that's going to be also be the trick. We'll, we're going to separate the wheat from the chaff here and see who, <laughs> who washes our beautiful faces, huh? <laughs> oh, uh, let me get us going with this. Do, do you have any thoughts beyond what you've said to me in private about the death of Cormac McCarthy? Uh, granted, we're not a book podcast, and and we actually have centered, we, we've narrowed our podcast from its inception to really just television and streaming. Um, we used to cover just about anything and everything, but still, Cormac McCarthy uh, it worked hand in hand with movies and 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 that are now streaming. But I know that Donovan and Adam, for sure, I don't know if Natalie was a fan. But I want to... I like books. <laughs> My buddy Raz has a very funny statement on books that I can't repeat here. I can't repeat in the in, in almost any context, but it's Raz good. works blue. Yeah, he's big. <laughs> he works beyond the pale. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to open the floor. Just, just quick snippets beyond maybe something you've texted me recently. I went back and reread that Adam mentioned it in text that I think it was 1992 interview right before the border trilogy came out. And I forgot just like how hilarious every aspect of his life was like every part of it was funny. Like my favorite bit was he's like, yeah, I typed up my first book. Then I mailed it to random house. Cause it's the only publisher I knew. <laughs> and what's especially crazy about that story is it found its way like he he mailed it to an editor that he had heard of because it was Faulkner's editor, and mm -hmm. Faulkner had obviously passed away fairly recently in the grand scheme of these things, and so he goes from having Faulkner to then Cormac McCarthy stumbling onto his desk, which is just insane mm -hmm. to think about. I mean, how did that not end up in the like in the trash trash bin? But thank goodness it didn't. It's a different time, I guess. I don't know. So, and that, uh, those those were his. We're talking about it really his first three books, which were much more Appalachian type, Southern Gothic, really deep into the Southern and the, deep into the Gothic stuff. There, um, so maybe they, he just saw a, a familiar handwriting, uh, metaphorically speaking. You know, with being having worked with Faulkner. It's a thing that he doesn't get enough credit for, and maybe as a Southerner, I want want him to is that you know he he worked in Knoxville and the adjacent land for a long time. That was his his version of Mississippi before. You know, we kind of think of him more with the Southwest, but that was a later career thing, and it's certainly what made him in a lot of ways. But I mean, heck, even The Road, you could read that as a Southern mm -hmm. novel if you really mm -hmm. want to try mm -hmm. to put a geography on it, uh, which I don't think yeah, is necessary. It's... But I do think it's when people talk about the tradition of, of Southern literature being super rich, it's like, well, McCarthy is very much a part of that. I think one of the cool things about, because I completely agree with you, and the other cool thing about... Cormac McCarthy especially is like he grew out of that tradition, right? Like he has right. the same sense of humor Faulkner has, definitely. Um, he has the same penchant for kind of almost like Old Testament pronunciations. Mm. Um, but he also was completely unafraid to take a big risk and just do something completely different. Like going with totally. switching to Blood Meridian, mining the Western, doing No Country for Old Men, then following up with The Road. Then these, which I haven't read yet, but these two that he's done right at the end of his life seems, mm -hmm. I've heard they're pretty good. The they are pretty good. Set. Yeah, the passengers right back to the south. Is it, um, is his writing sometimes just too hard? Like difficult? Yeah. Difficult to... Purposefully, you know what I mean? Uh, I had... I don't I don't think that it's difficult to read and understand at all. Uh but I do think it is still hard. I had a college professor say he kind of pulled off the you know you get to those later years of English classes and they're expecting you to read a book in like a couple 
days, a couple of class yeah. sittings, whatever. And yeah. he pulled back on Blood Meridian and said, you know, corn makes a little bit like cheesecake. Like cheesecake's <laughs> really good, but you don't want to eat an entire cheesecake in one sitting. So I do think it's... I, first of all, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever met me? <laughs> You're not going to feel too good after that cheesecake, though. Well, I'll do it anyway because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> no, but, but go his ahead. point about uh, it, it's just being so rich, I do think it can mm -hmm. be difficult in that way. Uh, but, like, I read Blood Meridian a couple of years ago with some buddies, and, you know, they one had read it before in one hat, and, and the one that had read it before said, I forgot just how how accessible this is. You know, people think of it as a, a tough novel, and I I don't think it is when you compare it with, like, if you want to keep the Faulkner train going. I mean, it's it's basically pop lit compared to Sound of the Fury or Absalom Absalom. Oh, absolutely. Wow. wow. But it is. You don't really want to, like, you know, sit on a beach and, and turn the page. So I, don't, I do think I, it is tough in that way. Do, do you want to know a running joke I kept going when I read that book with Caleb What's, Johnson? What's that? What are the founders of the Alabama take? Uh, I would text him about once a week when I was reading the book or, you know, a couple of times a week and say, um, I'm at this part in Blood Meridian and I'd recount where I was and I'd say, I'm, I'm understanding it a lot better than you did <laughs> every time. That's great. It would, and he would fire back, you know, it, he great. would bring up something that he understood better than I. Uh, I yeah, Cormac uh, McCarthy. Well, just while we're talking about Blood Meridian, can I just get this in? Since we are a TV and movies mm -hmm. podcast, people say yeah. they talk about Bring unfilmable it. work. I think that Blood Meridian's time, it, it could have happened any time in the last 10, 15 years and certainly could now in some way, shape, or form. It, it should be, a, uh, what do you think, limited series? or, or Yeah, I think that makes sense. Movie. I know that's okay. like almost a cop out at this point talking it about is, yeah, you know, but, quote unquote yeah. serious literature, but no, that would be well, a great limited series. I wonder if you could even, and to be true to the novel, I wonder if you could even get away with it just because it is so violent. Yeah, it's do horrific. it. Yeah, do it. That's that's what I think. Yeah, I'll end with this. The thing that kind of saddens me is not the not the adjective, not the description. The thing that kind of brings me down a little about Cormac McCarthy is he's become such a symbol for a particular kind of bro. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, totally. A certain songwriting literary bro. It, it, not to step on toes or anything, because that's that was me for a long time. Uh, but it's like... you. you, you there was a certain checklist I could have made on who was going to mourn his death that day, and it was just like I, I could check off all the boxes of everyone. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. But especially with Blood Meridian, that's the one they go to where they say, this one's the one that changed me. Yeah, I think All the Pretty Horses gets some, uh, <laughs> some praise. Which I like. Yeah, I like it too, but the maybe the ones who aren't as... Uh, Old Testament or violent or want maybe mm. some lighter uh, takeaways for life would reach for all the pretty horses. It's, there's a Cormac for every bro. <laughs> that's, okay, that's, that's a good that's point. That's true. Another quick topic I'll toss out to you. Let me take your temperature on next week's debut of the Disney Plus Marvel show, Secret Invasion. Literally I'll, the I'll first I'm hearing about it. Oh, really? <laughs> it's good to... Is it, is it really? Yeah, it really is. Because it's all over my uh, Instagram commercial ads. That's what it's, I'm usually seeing. It's got, uh, you know, Oscar winner Sammy Jackson in it. It does. It, I, I'll, I'll tell you how I feel, and then I really want to hear Natalie, because I, I, I know she knows about it. <clears throat> I'm super excited, if only to see Ben Mendelsohn in a TV series again. You guys remember HBO's The Outsider? How great he was as the detective struggling with, like, a recent death of his own son. Remember good. that? Man, he was so good. So he's back as a, a – very similar to The Outsider. He's back as an alien. 
<laughs> Very similar as a detective grieving the loss of his son. He's an alien. Of course. In the Marvel Universe. No, but how do you... It, it looks kind of like they're wanting to do the kind of sort of serious spy thriller-ish feel that they had for uh, Captain America. Uh, this Not Civil War. Captain America. No, yeah, Civil Winter War. Soldier. Oh, no, no, Winter right. Soldier is the Winter Soldier. They had the you're totally right. <laughs> what do you think, Natalie? Were you, you excited or you uh, got any feelings about it? Uh, no, I'm excited about it. I mean, it's going to have... Uh... Something to miss? Y'all there? Yes. Yeah. That was weird. Sorry. That's okay. Adam has cut out, but maybe he, he, he often will rejoin. Am I here? <laughs> I tell you what, let's... I think uh, our whole, whole thing just glitched. It's funny, because he cut out, but you for us, you never did. Or at least for me. Oh, all of y'all cut out for me. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Should we rectify... Let's stop the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop this one. Yeah, I'm excited about this show. Um, I think it's got a really great cast, especially adding Amelia Clark. That's going to be interesting. Um, I. I think I maybe I said this a few weeks ago. Well, a long time ago. When? Where was the last we talked about Marvel? I think the movies are terrible, uh, but I think they're doing some interesting stuff with the TV shows, um, aside from uh, Winter Soldier Super Spy or whatever it was called. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, the Falcon. Falcon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was that was bad. But all the other TV shows have been a lot of fun that because they're, they're, they've been able to put more into it. Um, yeah, I'm looking for I think it'll be a fun weekly something to watch after a work day kind of a deal. I think so. I, I, I am a little concerned, be, both because of what you brought up, because the the Falcon and Winter Soldier one seems to be the one that they were trying to be the most serious with, and it's like we're going to talk about race in America using the Winter Soldier. Yeah, but and the then cast they, is so much It was much just better. a big. It was just a big miss. So I hope. I hope that it, like they don't totally lose well, their sense of fun. With that one, one though, that one suffered because it it had to go through like multiple last minute rewrites because of COVID. Because mm. the whole story was okay. supposed to be about a pandemic, and then they just kind of scrapped it and threw something at the wall. So maybe this one having actual forethought <laughs> that they can actually do will be better. That's something that they threw at the wall was Wyatt Russell's shield. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I don't know. But I, the, the only thing I, I'm worried about a little, this one does seem like it could be pulled off as a television series and a good one, spy thriller kind of television series. The thing that that bothers just me personally is I don't know how much I remember from Captain Marvel and those scroll people. So I've got, you know, I guess they'll do a good job of handling that for me. How much I mean, do you need to remember? There's not a lot to know other than turns out like maybe they're not as bad as they as. Yeah, I mean, because they were also in whatever Spider-Man movie too. Mm. Yeah, the, the second one. Second one. That's true. Far from far from home. Is that what it's called? But yeah, I've reached the age of my television where I'm just like, give me Ben Mendelsohn and I'll watch it. <laughs> totally. He's a simple man. Simple man with simple pleasures. <laughs> Let's take a quick little break, and in our more dedicated segments, we will want to talk about the first episode of the new season of Netflix is uh, the Netflix show Black Mirror, and I'll ask Adam and Natalie about Smartless a little. Yep. Yeah, so you know, again, YouTube viewers, you you don't get really a break from us. This is where we read a bio of our listener of the week. So Joel Atkinson was, I've got here, born. That's all I've got. No, that's, we'll just jump right back into it. Born someplace at some time. He was born somewhere. How old is Joel? 
Uh, let's see. He What's is. <laughs> uh, he, he, will, he will be. He's forty-one. <laughs> okay, cool. He's from and Lamo, you work Ohio, with him? where they make uh, M1 Abrams tanks. I used to. We, we were librarians together at UConn. Uh, but weird he, he facts. Back just to down. <laughs> hey, where, where is he living now? Indianapolis. Oh, not. Nah. Does he like it? Yeah. Yeah, Joel, come the on the show one one week. <laughs> he's a is smart that guy. Where they do the race cars? Yes. Mm-hmm. Knew it. It is indeed. Like it in Indianapolis will be great. <laughs> is he still in the Library of Sciences? Yep, he's uh, he's a librarian at uh, Butler Butler University. Oh, that's a. He went from one basketball school to another basketball. I know. School. <laughs> I know, right? Well, and now they actually right. play each other again because ever since UConn rejoined the Big East. That's right. Okay. Anyway, thank thanks for listening, Joel, and and we'll do we'll just have fun with that stupid little segment week to week. So here we are. We're back to discuss the first episode of the long running Netflix dystopia nightmare meets technology of a series, Black Mirror, created I think mostly written by Charlie Brooker, Englishman Charlie Brooker. Uh, this show this show's been around for a while. Kind of hit me just how long it's almost 10 years it's eight years old i think if my math's correct uh and remember those opening episodes were not as well produced or they didn't look as visually stunning as the ones that you they definitely had that like bbc aesthetic to it that's it which this is a side note but my dad says that um doctor who looks so cheap because socialism doesn't work (laughs) it's a real real thing that has been said to me put that on a t-shirt man that's pretty good is that a real sentiment (laughs) yes like he likes doctor who but he's also like there's a reason it's cheap and that's because of you know nationalized broadcasting wow that's pretty funny how big are you (laughs) yes there is (laughs) How big are each of you on Black Mirror just uh, before t- before today, this uh, new series? You know, new, excuse me, this new season. I started watching it when it I'd heard about it and then it, it wasn't super easy to access, I guess, at first. And it came to Netflix and I was homesick one day when I still had a job that I could take sick hours from. So that's it's been a while. Uh, and I watched that first episode. And during the, is it the pig episode, it it's is the, the pig, pig episode. episode. <laughs> we can talk freely about the pig episode now, right? Like it's been long enough that if it's you've been seen eight it, years, yeah. Uh, just as the the act is beginning to occur, or some pants come down, or something, Natalie walks in for her lunch break <laughs> while I'm homesick, and she's like, "The hell, you're you're sick, huh? Yeah, you really." So that was my uh, first truly black sick. Era. <laughs> experience no it's the show about a dystopian that's close to yeah so i uh i guess i'll save you know when i think back on that and where it is now yeah the quality is much better but that that or at least the you know cinematography and the quality of the the picture but the show hit a little different in the world of eight years ago than it does now. Very. Not to not to blurt out. I know you wanted introductory thoughts, but I just had to get that in there while reminiscing cur- about that first episode. Curious yeah, if y'all would, love Black Mirror or not. I uh, sort of like. I've always kind of. I think I think Black Mirror has the same thing with the Twilight Zone, where it's always doing something interesting, and it's usually pretty well written. But when it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. And it's just, yeah. I think that's just kind of the nature of an anthology. So I'll say that I'm I'm an enthusiast for its really good episodes. I like the ones where they get, you know, like they got John Hamm to be in one. They got Jesse Plemons to be in one. They got, you know, they have good actors in it. Um, but I, the show overall sometimes is, I don't know, maybe too clever for itself. Because it's always trying to be like, where's the twist? I think we've outgrown yeah. it. I think technology has outgrown this show. All the things it told us eight years ago that we were going to supposed to be scared of, 
have happened and turns out maybe <laughs> they weren't so scary or they're worse. <laughs> and I think the the hard hitting catch that everybody was into when the show came out, I think it's it's no longer as like provocative as it was. Yeah, that's it, a good it point. Definitely has. Like thinking about the first step of season six, which is all I've seen of season six so far, and that yeah. very first episode. Uh it like the that first episode was for whatever reason, like much na like the tone was much nastier, like it was much harder, it was much sharper. And this one, maybe and maybe there, maybe it's just because of comedic effect or whatever, but this one felt like uh, the the edges were a little blunted. That was Do you boring. have a uh, you, this most recent one? It, yeah, in episode six. It didn't yeah, feel we'll get into brutal. We'll get into the challenge the awful did. in a second. Do you have a? The, but the good thing about Black Mirror is, he, if you didn't like one, you might like the next one, and so on. Like you were talking about, Donovan. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite episode in particular? Hmm. I think mine might be Metalhead. I was just on the edge of my seat for that one. You remember this one with the? It was Which in black was and white about the robot dogs. Oh yeah, that one was good. I'm trying to. Think. Uh, what, was, what was that one with John Hamm? Because he was pretty. I remember. I don't remember what? a ton about it, but I remember him being pretty good in that. White Bear. That's right. And it was like a Christmas episode or something. Yeah. Weird. It was like a Christmas uh, special. There's also the one called Be Right Back where Haley Atwell and Domhnall Gleeson play a couple. And one of them has been resurrected as kind of like a first, like a, like a message on a screen and then as a clone almost. Do you remember that one? Yeah. yeah. That, one, that one was pretty good. I like that one. Because uh, sometimes the show can also combine technology with like an emotional attachment that sometimes people have. Um, anyway, those are a couple of my favorites. Uh, but but I think Natalie's right. Now that we're so used to the premise, you're just hyper aware of what's the catch here. Mm -hmm. And I watched the most recent episode which is called Joan is Awful. It just had me on my toes as soon as I watched it. It had that big red title screen, Joan is Awful, and I'm looking for, okay, how's she awful? Where, <laughs> where's the where's the twist coming? It's, uh, it was, I was almost too immersed in figuring that out or keeping an eye open for how that will come into play rather than maybe just chilling and watching it. So let's get into Season six, episode one, Joan is awful. That's the only one we're going to touch on, but we will spoil it. So, what do you, what did you think of it? It was all right, and then it really lost me in the last ten minutes. I think that was my assessment as well. Adam, what did you think? I thought it was very just okay. Uh, it felt like, I mean, for the so not to, I'm going to be like a broken record here and apologize. <laughs> series you know can have some some interesting episodes like donovan said and some that are swinging a miss and when it maybe it's a victim of its own success uh that i just kind of found it to be like black mirror paint by numbers mm -hmm. it, yeah it did part of it too at least for me i was thinking about it afterwards and I, by itself, I, I agree with Adam. Like, the show is kind of just okay. I agree with you, actually, too, Blaine. It's that Twilight Zone problem when you're, like, trying to figure out, like, why is Kurt William Shatner in the past? But <laughs> the other thing was, like, it's kind of a satire on, like, Netflix and the industry and all that. But Oh, yeah. Barry just wrapped up. And Barry's been so much better. <laughs> yeah. That it's kind of hard to, if you put those two side by side. Barry's going to win. This episode was like 55 minutes, maybe. And you're right, Donovan. The first 35 or 40, I was, I thought, oh, okay, this is going to be a pretty good episode. And then um, it dropped the ball. I think that once Selma Hayek and Joan invade Streamberry and over here, you know, how it's all put together, that was so reminiscent of when She Hulk invaded Marvel. <laughs> Uh, although I did like the final little thing that there is a lower level Joan and there there are lower levels of Joan. I thought that was kind of interesting for a split second, but when it was in that first 35 minutes, 
I thought it was really going to tackle the question of what, what would you look like if they did a movie of your life? You know, how, how do you come off? And I think that's a question everybody's considered, isn't it? <laughs> Probably, you know, it's kind of like the thing of like the Tom Sawyer thing, right? Like, what if I could attend my own funeral? Exactly. <laughs> you know, what would people say? But um, it starts so soon, her being, well, awful, that it doesn't mm-hmm. really ever have a chance to do that. You know, it, it only ruins her life in ways that are untrue. So it doesn't even start to mind that possibility, like from the word go. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it does catch her uh, going to dinner with the ex and hiding those texts or whatever, but she had already been embellished to be so terrible that, you know, or just loses her job because of like a a requisite reaction by her company that it doesn't really allow for that self-reflection to ever happen. It's only like cause and effect things that take place. You know what I mean? And even like Mm -hmm. her flexing a bit of personality and trying to, exhibits some self-determination by going and shitting in the church is kind of just like it, you know it's not that interesting really mm-hmm. yeah i wondered to myself if that part was too wild or too overwritten and then i remembered the the pig episode yeah <laughs> but it, and it it's, definitely you know, that's pretty on on brand but still it, it had an uh it just didn't hit as hard for me with the pig episode, right? Which is, no, it, of course it, it doesn't. Kind of, I mean, because it's played for laughs, and then you get Salma Hayek uh, being mad about it, which is, she did a pretty good job of being funny about that, right? But Yeah, she did, but they they chose some weird things about her personally to be a part of this character. Her mispronunciations of things just felt like an odd choice to try to make funny. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting yep. way to <laughs> to get celebrities that Black Mirror would never have conceived of being able to get Selma Hayek when it first uh-huh. started. You know, and now it's enough of a cultural thing. There are there are meta things about it beyond the meta Michael Sarah moment that are kind of intriguing. Like, you know, when Clay, Kate Blanchett is... You're like, what is, is Kate Blanchett also in this episode? Yeah. Selma Hayek? Well, no, but. Did you think, is this going to be an episode about Lydia Tarr? Now, <laughs> now we're talking. That would have been. But yeah, just kind of, it opens doors that are. I'm not even sure it opens doors that could have been more no. interesting than we got. Mm-hmm. It just. It didn't. it didn't even get there. You know, sometimes you get frustrated with the show because it's like, man, they got. 90% of the way there and then just couldn't this one just kind of just petered out it did yeah it never really took off and I I've said the same thing like three times but my experience with this was watching probably the first 10 to 15 minutes it's like okay what's the twist and so everything yeah. kind of like oh it's all set up it's set up set up and then you get the twist and it's like all right like this is this is okay yeah but it, never, it, it, it never really takes off. And then the, at the ending, nothing really comes together. Cause like who, that, who cares that they're all on a computer? It was a, I mean, it, here's where it dropped the ball. Here's where it fumbled. It could have really been more pointed if about midway through the writing process of the episode, if they would have said in the writer's room said, okay, this is going in like, 10 different directions we could really dig at streaming we could really dig at the treatment of women and how their how society looks at women uh we could really dig at television versus cinema there's we could make a dig at cgi or ai and it's like they had all these options and they didn't pick a one like yeah. adam said mm-hmm. yeah. and well that's and there's why. the when they talk about how the ai works and how Netflix works. And then you think about, well, Netflix made this show. Like there's some self satire there, but is there also like, uh, Hey, look at the shiny thing while we're actually doing this. You know what I mean? Like, is there like actual real life black mirror nefarious stuff going on? 
you know i mean ai is like the future so what is it what they're presenting to us is not what they actually have in mind you know what i mean hmm is that too like uh tin, tin, tin foil so, hat kind of thing <laughs> uh, yeah maybe or maybe not you never know sometimes you hear that stuff and it is too tin foil hat and then it then it rings true uh, one week later it's just fun. I mean, they directly spoofed all of their own stuff, right? And then made them out to be this kind of evil empire. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're just like writers sitting in a room going, "Oh, this would be funny." You know, this isn't like The Simpsons making fun of Fox. This, okay. I, it, it feels okay. more sinister to me than that. Huh. It's a little suspect. Well, that's all I'm saying. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wondered about that too, just because it's like. It wants you to be like, yeah, we know too, right? Like you're addicted right. to Netflix. It's fun. But at the same time, it's like, you're not going to re- say anything real because you're not going to go after your own image. <laughs> right. I'm not going to buy know? the hand that feeds you. Yeah. Black Mirror is beholden to its corporate overlord. Interesting. Okay. Well, that was the first episode. Uh, I'll watch the season for sure. I, I always uh, watch the Black Mirror episodes. Well, and the next ones are going to be tied into some of the stuff mentioned in this one, right? Are they? Yeah, Natalie noticed that. Natalie was a uh, noted hater of this episode. I feel like she's been it. quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, she, uh, yeah. It's stupid. It's real I, I, stupid. If you're if you're a listener without viewing, Natalie had a little technical issue too. She um, she got kicked out of our stream. But did you hate it for the kind of the reasons we're talking about, or you just found it kind of boring from the offset I was I think it was boring I think it was uncreative I think it was you know it, it, it was they're trying to do all these things about and y'all t- t- talked a little bit about this already you know technology and the advances and is it scary it's like no it's not and if it is somebody's doing something about it like we don't have robot overlords yet. And when we do, we probably won't be able to make content making fun of it. So, you know. <laughs> you you Plus, think you think that it's not scary and there's someone doing something about it? I think it's just not that like I think I think there are some protections in place. I don't think the AI is gonna come get us anytime soon. And and I think the most unrealistic thing was they all had normal hands. So there's my one creative complaint about this whole episode. I did not know that. Do you I was know this about AI? Operas. Yeah, yeah, they, they they can't do hands well. Yeah, if you, that's one way to notice if something's fake, if it's an AI generated image, their hands are all messed up. They got way too many fingers, or like well, four hands are wrists. tough to draw. <laughs> I don't know. It was dumb. I'm not going to watch any more of this show. I think it's <laughs> I think it's played its part. Yeah, I'm over it. There you go. Wow. Adam, Natalie, do you want to give us some brief thoughts on the Max documentary documenting of Smartless on the Road Tour? Um, y'all gather those thoughts because for those who may not know, Smartless is that famous, very, very popular, very famous podcast from Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes. They're the host, and they and they and one of them will invite a guest onto the podcast that the other two didn't know was coming. They talk to the guest it's a lot of their perpetual reposits against one another there's just constantly picking at one of the like, like brothers uh it's very funny the podcast uh the documentary is a little more the same but you get them on the road so you i've watched the first episode i think you guys have watched a lot of those that are on max we watched them all we finished okay. it we were uh we started what ended up being the last episode, and I paused it and backed out to, to see if it was so that we could savor it. Hmm. I'm also, I'll start by saying I'm a sucker for Sam Jones stuff. Why is you that? Know, uh, well, the visual currency he's working in immediately felt like the Wilco documentary, I'm Trying yeah. to Break Your Heart. Yeah. Which the intro. Which he of, did. Right, 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 right. Uh, and that intro of Tweety smoking cigarettes and an acoustic version of a Yankee Hotel Foxtrot song playing while he drives down Lakeshore Avenue in Chicago. It's just like, 
Just LSD. a straight, huh? LSD. We're on LSD. <laughs> Just a straight uh, shot of, of happiness for me. Yeah. So uh, I love his style. I love the way that he can blend into a room. And I thought it was interesting. You know, I mean, I'm, Arrested Development is probably my favorite show ever. Mm -hmm. So to see two of them interact 20 years later, mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty fun. Which of the three are you? That's got to be the new question, right? Which instead of which beetle are you? Which smartless host are you? I feel like you can't answer that for yourself, can you? That's I don't know. Well, I well who do you want to be? Who do you hope people <laughs> assign? Well, you? I just know that I watched the first episode last night, and I was as soon as Jason Bateman said, "I need some gas X and a sugar free Red Bull," I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's exactly what I take before our show." <laughs> <laughs> This Jason was, Bateman is just the this, grandmother inside of all of us. That's definitely This true. was a energy drink. This was not even <laughs> sugar free, nonetheless. Uh, but no, as soon as they, he said that, um, I did. I really enjoyed it. I, I look forward to watching more. I think they're so funny as actors, all three of them, and I think they're so funny as podcast hosts and the producers of that podcast host. But I got a little worried that. Sometimes on the podcast, it can be too much of them. Sometimes mm. on their podcast, I want them to pump the brakes and, and let the guest really divulge about the question they asked. And they take a long time to set up their questions sometimes. Which they just, rag on Jason Bateman on, about continually. They in the do. Document. And they do. And, and, and the ragging on creates yeah. that more time taken up that could be used by the guest. Of course, they're first guest is spoiler if you don't want to know their first guest was uh will ferrell who you know, that doesn't matter with him <laughs> you know he's not going right. to give you the most serious intelligent answer but i listened to a recent podcast of theirs with uh, bono we'll take that uh, it's a fairly recent one i've listened to and there were so many times when i was just like just stop the question you've asked the question just stop talking let him answer because i only i know you only have him for 45 minutes if you could talk over Bono, you are truly a world class uh, bloviator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought the the doc though. I mean, that can speak to this too. But we kept saving it for like the end of the evening, yeah. like a, a nice, like warm blanket kind of thing. Because I mean, it's there's nothing predictable. They did kind of the the thing that I wish more people would do, where it's kind of conventional. They don't mind showing that, hey, we're rich. We're on a private jet. Uh, we have people going to get us gas X and sugar-free Red Bulls and eating fancy meals. And we're vain. We care about how we look. Uh, they also, maybe I was, I was personally amused by how little touring, like real touring they had done. You know, like, I mean, the, the conversations about, like, what are we going to eat? It doesn't matter if you're on a private jet or in an Econo line van, that it is the exact same dynamic. And the choice for them always to stay in the same hotel suite together, it just, it was all fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like what you want to think your famous, uh, famous folks are doing in their spare time, you mm -hmm. know, had a good time. Fun too to see, like, like if you have siblings or particularly all my experiences just with brothers like you understand mm -hmm. this dynamic of just being so cruel to each other oh yeah but then <laughs> but then laughing the entire time yeah and and not only laughing at each other but at yourself too like it right. was really it was really fun to see the dynamics of especially between will arnett and jason jason bateman you know they're so mean to each other but then somebody will you know will and they will say something making fun of jason and it's just harsh but then jason basically get, he gets this like childish grin on his face like he knows it's true like yeah he's a narcissist yeah. asshole and then sean and hayes balances so, it so out nice so to nice see it. yeah and there's the middle brother sean hayes coming in and like y'all y'all be good you know yeah um i did wonder in the opening 15 minutes of episode one how much their continual sarcasm could turn into plain rudeness or it's just the result of the Hollywood life and having everything at your disposal. I got, I got a little worried there, but it, uh, it like Natalie just said, there's, 
there's some balance involved. Uh, they played Constitution Hall in the first episode, DC. Uh, I've actually I seen a concert there. Who did you see there? The Shins. Oh, <laughs> cool. Nice. Yep. Uh, the, the best line from the first episode, talking about not eating meat before the show, he... Uh, Jason Bateman says, I'm trying to keep it real. And Will Arnett just jumps right in and says, real close to the toilet. <laughs> just like, how do you not miss a beat there? That's so good. It's also funny to see him freak out a little bit about the format. You know, they're in the early episodes. They're mm -hmm. not sure what's going to work and what's not going to work. And it's fun to see them be in moments, especially in upcoming episodes for you, Blaine. Uh, be pretty unguarded about things and you even see him kind of go through the well I, I think that that was a pretty good one and then like the further away from it they get they're like okay that we have to reassess how we're doing this kind of yeah. thing and seeing people have to be adaptable on the fly it's like that that's what touring and live performance is like so it's interesting to see because they're so good at what they do yeah and I, I love backstage stuff. I always wonder what a performer is doing as the lights go down, as they, uh, for concerts, you know, what do they do during encore break? Do they go smoke a cigarette? Do they get a drink of water? Do they meditate for two minutes? I mean, what are they? I'm always curious. Uh, so you get a little opportunity to see a few of those kinds of things. So. A re revealing about simple things behind the scenes is if that's what you enjoy, you get a lot of that here. And that is fun, especially with these three. So we can recommend. Good time. Yeah, we can recommend Smartless on the on the road. That's the name of it. It's on Max. Uh, that's the end of our episode this week. We. Uh, what's the deal? We'll just be back next week with more, right? A new listener. Reunited. Week. Yeah. So it'll be the same crew. Uh, find us on Instagram and Twitter and at Taking It Down Pod. That's Instagram and Twitter. And then you can find everything Alabama Take related to the Alabama Take on pretty much all social media. Goodbye. Roll Tide. See everyone later. Taking It Down is the TV and streaming podcast from the Alabama Take. It can be found in any podcast app on the alabamatake.com, as well as on YouTube in two versions, the video version and the regular version. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to be on the lookout for other podcasts brought to you and in production by the Alabama Take. Follow the Alabama Take on all social media, as well as Taking It Down at Taking It Down Pod on Instagram and Twitter.